In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a chart like this one that we have here that has an initial or beginning row, a final row, and an effect row, and then columns for pressure, temperature, volume, and number of particles, the four quantities that can describe a gas. This is the first problem in Worksheet 3, Unit 2, if you're in modeling chemistry. So watching this video could be a good way to get started uh, working on that worksheet. The question states that a sample of gas occupies 150 milliliters at 25 degrees C. And then it asks us, what is its volume when the temperature is increased to 50 degrees C? It also tells us that pressure and number of particles is constant. Right off the bat, we should notice that since the temperature is increasing, we should see an increase also in the volume of gas, because that's what we've learned by doing investigations up to this point. So when you're all done doing these calculations, if you don't have a volume that's bigger than when you started in the final row, probably something went wrong. That's a good check. We can make life easier on ourselves by ignoring the quantities that aren't going to change. So in the pressure, initial row, we don't really know what the pressure is, but we do know that the final will be the same, and that means that there's no real effect here. The same thing is true for a number of particles. We don't know what the particle number is to start or to end, so we'll just ignore it. We don't have to deal with those columns on this chart. So let's go to the initial or starting row and fill in what we do know. The problem tells us that 150 milliliters is the volume. I'm going to leave off the unit and just make sure that I stay consistent as I'm doing my calculations. It tells us that the temperature is 25 degrees C, so I might be tempted to click into the temperature box and uh, put in 25, but I can't do that. And the reason is because the law that we developed depends on us using an absolute temperature scale like Kelvin's. So I should calculate what is my temperature in Kelvin's by adding 273. That's how you do the conversion. So I'll take 25 degrees Celsius. I'll add to it 273 and the sum of those is 298. So the starting temperature is 25 degrees C but more importantly in Kelvin's it's 298. Now the final temperature is 50 degrees C. To find that and insert it correctly, I should also add 273 to 25, or 250. So I'll go 50 plus 273, and that quantity is 323. So 323 kelvins is the final temperature, 323. The question is, What's the volume? That's what we want to know. And how we're going to do this is we're going to find out what is the effect on the temperature, the thing that we do know about how the change went down. So the effect is the temperature changed to 323, 298 of what it started as. So the comparison between the end and the beginning is finally it was 323 298 bigger than it was at the start. It's just a ratio of final to starting, or final to initial. Now, because we know that volume and temperature are directly proportional, that means that whatever the effect was for temperature, that's also going to be the effect for volume. So to calculate the new volume, we'll just take the old volume, which was 150 milliliters, and we're going to multiply it by the effect, 323 divided by 298. Again, this is because temperature and volume are directly proportional to each other. So whatever ratio the effect was for temperature, that's also going to be the ratio that the effect will be for volume. Now, if this was a comparison of volume and pressure, for example, those are inversely proportional, so we'd have to take that ratio and flip it. But here they're directly proportional, so we just keep it the same. So if I take 150 and multiply by 323, and then divide that product by 298, it comes out to 162, 162 milliliters. Um, I should probably round that off to two significant figures, because I only have two significant figures in 150 the way it's written. So 160 milliliters is the final volume. 
So to do a quick check, the check is, yes, the volume increased. So probably I did my calculation correctly. What's the effect for volume? Well, the effect for volume, as we already discussed here, is exactly the same as the effect for temperature because they're directly proportional. So that's how you can use these initial final effect charts to make predictions when there's a change in the quantity of a gas.